Dear aspirants, very good evening. This is an important announcement. We are going to conduct a live session on mains scholarship test at 3 p.m. tomorrow, that is on 14th August 2020. As you all know that Shankar IAS Academy conducted free mains scholarship test that is from 27th July to 31st July and the results were declared on 9th August 2020. And we are happy to inform that we have received excellent response and very good feedback for the scholarship test. So, on the request of for many viewers, we are conducting this live interaction session on scholarship test and this live interaction session will consist of explaining the parameters of evaluation like content, structure and QI. The session also includes sharing of topos or better answers, discussing best practices, avoidable mistakes, further sessions for improvisation and finally question and answer sessions with aspirants. So we request all the viewers to participate in this live session. With this information, let's begin the Hindu news analysis for the date 13th August 2020. These are the list of the topics along with the page numbers displayed here for your reference. Let's begin with the analysis of first news article. This opened article is with reference to Indian foreign policy. It author discusses how should India remain as an independent power in the present context. The author also discusses how India remained independent despite the changing world order since 1940s. So, we will discuss these aspects in this analysis and the syllabus relevant to the analysis of this news article is highlighted here for your reference. Now, if you look at the title of this news article, it is titled as a self-reliant foreign policy. What is meant by self-reliance? In terms of economy, we say self-reliance as not depending on others for our needs and it refers to reduction of import dependence on other countries by fulfilling our needs through improving quality domestic production. Then in terms of foreign policy, the meaning of self-reliance is a strategic autonomy that is having an independent foreign policy without the influence of others. Now let us see about India's independent stature in foreign policy despite the changing world order. See the world order was bipolar from the year 1947 to the year 1991. In the two poles were United States of America and the Soviet Union. Then the disintegration of the Soviet Union was the turning point in the year 1991 and after which the world order was unipolar till the year 2008. And during this time the only powerhouse was the United States of America. However, this world order underwent a change in the year 2008 as United States of America entered a long cycle of economic crisis and at this time China caught up with United States of America in overall power space. So from the year 2008 till now the world was not bipolar but multipolar. So at present there are multiple poles in various regions of the world and some of the poles are United States of America, China, Russia, India, Brazil. Israel and Australia and all these poles now have a say in the international order in one way or in the other way. Further, India remains as an independent developing country which does not take orders from the great powers. But India was to intensify cooperation with some other countries in various domains when geopolitical circumstances compelled India for its survival. This is because during the 1962 war with China, we had to appeal to the United States of America for emergency military aid to stop the Chinese aggression from taking over the whole of eastern India. Then in relation to the Bangladeshi liberation war in the year 1971, we had to enter a treaty of peace, friendship and cooperation with the Soviet Union in order to prevent both China and the United States from engaging in the combined war. And in the year 1999, that is in the Kargil conflict, India welcomed a direct intervention by the United States of America to force Pakistan to retreat. Here the author states that in all these examples, India did not become any less autonomous when geopolitical circumstances compelled India to enter into alliance-like cooperation with the major powers. And India secured its freedom, sovereignty and territorial integrity by maneuvering the great power equations and playing the real political game. So, despite our cooperation with the major powers, we did what we have to and we did not succumb to pressure from such powers. And the best example could be the demonstration of India as a nuclear weapon state by conducting two nuclear tests in the year 1974 and again in the year 1998. And we know that uh, since independence, India has never been subordinated to a foreign hegemon. 
but this year India is facing a tough time that is with China attempting to enter into Indian territory and with United States of America waiting to make India as its ally in its uh, emerging cold war with China. So what India should do in this context? If the answer is India should stay as an independent power center by means of intensified cooperation with the middle powers in Asia and also around the world. If the middle power refers to a state that is not a superpower but can have influence over other states and also in the important international affairs. So in this regard India should follow diversification because diversification of cooperation is the essence of self-reliance. This is because diversification allows us to handle safely or manage our needs without being an ally in an alliance. So India should not join as an ally with the United States of America to counterbalance China. If India does so, it would be a great mistake as it will constrict India's interests such as ties with Iran and also with Russia and it will also impact India's efforts in the process of indigenous defense modernization. So India should intensify cooperation with a wide basket of strategic partners including the United States of America to constrain Chinese aggression. So here the author advises this is the only viable diplomatic way forward in the current emerging multipolar world order. So India should neither isolate itself nor be the part of any alliance. So it should maximize its potential in a multi-vector foreign policy with a several like-minded partners. So to conclude this news article, these are uh, some of the information from this news article which talks about uh, self-reliance in Indian foreign policy. Now let's move on to the next news article analysis. Now we have this editorial which is authored by a retired professor of clinical virology. In this editorial, he talks on how India should plan on its COVID-19 vaccination or vaccine delivery system. In this context, we will first understand what is a vaccine and vaccination and then we will discuss in detail about this editorial. The syllabus relevant to the analysis of this news article is highlighted here for your reference. Now, what is a vaccine? In simple terms, vaccine is a product that stimulates a person's immune system to produce immunity to a specific disease. Here, immunity means protecting the person from the disease. Now, what constitutes or what are the main ingredients of the vaccine? The first and foremost is an antigen which is a killed or weakened form of a virus or a bacteria and it is used to train our bodies to recognize and fight the disease if we encounter the disease in the future. Then the next ingredient is adjuvant which helps to boost our immune response. The third ingredient is preservatives which ensure a vaccine stay effective for a longer period. And finally, stabilizers which protect the vaccine during the storage and the transportation. Now, we should know that uh, many of the components used in vaccine occur naturally in the body or in the environment or in the foods we eat. So, we can say that a vaccine constitutes antigen, adjuvant, preservatives and then stabilizers. Now, what is vaccination? Know that vaccination is a simple, safe and effective way of introducing a vaccine into the human bodies. Generally, it is done either orally or through the injections. Now, we'll see how vaccines work in our body. So, when we get a vaccine, our immune system responds and vaccine will produce antibodies in the injected human bodies. Know that antibodies are proteins produced naturally by the immune system to fight against the disease. The vaccine will also help to remember the disease and how to fight the disease. That means if you are then exposed to the germ in the future, our immune system can quickly destroy before we become unwell. So, our immune systems are designed to remember the disease to fight against the disease in the future. So once we exposed to one or more doses of a vaccine, we typically remain protected against a disease for years or for many decades or in some cases for a lifetime. These are certain details about vaccine and the process of vaccination. With this information, now let us discuss some of the important points mentioned in the editorial. The author tells that we should prepare or plan well before the new vaccine for COVID-19 is launched for the public use. And we know that many vaccine trails are progressing around the world and India too candidates are promising to fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Hey, the one candidate is developed by Hyderabad based Bharat Biotech and the other one is by Pune based Serum Institute of India. Remember that in our early analysis we have discussed about COVAX facility. Know that COVAX facility is co-led by Gavi 
then the coalition for epidemic preparedness innovations that is cepi and also world health organization remember that covax facility aims to accelerate the development and manufacture of covid-19 vaccines and to guarantee fair and equitable access for every country in the world so the author tells that uh, we have good news on supply side of our vaccine then what about the delivery side constraints in this regard we should know that a covid-19 vaccine is for all age groups so there should be an innovative platform to deliver the vaccine effectively in this context uh, the author gives some important suggestions first and foremost is that the vaccine should be delivered on a priority basis that means the government should make a list of high risk category individuals and they should be vaccinated first so the high risk category include senior citizens people with the medical comorbidities and also front line health workers and children may be vaccinated before schools reopen i know that those who already had covid-19 infection does not require vaccination so their information should be made available in the public management system in order to remove their names from the vaccination processes then the next suggestion is that we need a effective vaccine delivery platform for this vaccination camps can be conducted on priority basis further the vaccination by appointments can be introduced as this will ensure that overcrowding does not happen in the vaccination camps and then regular follow ups should be done by vaccinated subjects to see if there are any side effects in this regard all side effects must be documented for the first and the second doses and this is important when we go for priority based vaccination here high risk individuals will be vaccinated first so for this careful documentation of all side effects on such high risk category people must be made further the government should ensure the safety of pregnant women who are getting vaccinated further the author tells that a community's need for vaccination is twofold first and foremost is that all those who must rebuild essential activities like health services education trade and economy must be protected then the second aspect is that our aim is to eradicate the disease altogether and we should know that india has a notable representation in decision making bodies of the world health organization and we are uniquely positioned to play a crucial role in advocating global eradication of covid-19 pandemic so to conclude this editorial we should focus or concentrate on the efficacy of our vaccine delivery system let's move on to the next news article analysis This article is about appeal made by the United Planters Association of Southern India to the union government in order to retain import duty on tea at the current level of 100%. Now that uh, as per India ASEAN Free Trade Area Agreement which came into effect in the year 2010 mandates the import duty on tea shall be reduced from the current level of 100% to the desired level of 45%. So in this context let us discuss in detail about tea cultivation then brief history of of tea cultivation then regional distribution in uh, india and also certain suitable geoclimatic factors the syllabus relevant to the analysis of this news article is highlighted here for your reference now the credit for creating india's vast tea empire goes to the british empire and we know that the growing demand for tea in europe coupled with the uh, suitable geoclimatic conditions in uh, several parts of india led to the growth of tea industry in our country and we know that the initial attempts to increase tea cultivation in our country were made by the then governor general warren hastings in the year 1776 Now that the Charter Act of 1833 ended the monopoly enjoyed by the British East India Company in tea trade with China and this led to the introduction of tea cultivation in India for the uh, British officer known as Robert Bruce discovered uh, tea plants growing wild in the upper Brahmaputra valley and in the year 1823 the first indian tea from assam was sent to england for public sale so this is all about a brief history of tea cultivation in our country with this information let us discuss the soil and uh, climatic conditions favorable for the tea cultivation know that tea is a rain fed crop that needs a specific soil and air temperature as well as a moisture condition for the desired growth of tea plants and tea cultivation requires a well drained soil with a high amount of organic matter and pH value in the range of 4.5 to 5.5 
The performance of T is excellent at elevations ranging from 1000 to 2500 meters and the favorable temperature for tea production is about 20 to 27 degrees Celsius. The tea plant can grow from tropical climates to subtropical climates but typically requires high humidity and heavy rainfall during the growing seasons. So these factors varies from different varieties of Indian teas such as Darjeeling tea, Assam tea, Nilgiris tea, Munnar tea etc. Also know that the gradual change in temperature and rainfall due to climate change has an adverse impact on tea production and these factors increased uh, temperatures and uh, variations in uh, rainfall pattern along with the uh, change in relative humidity and adversely affected uh, quality and quantity of tea production in our country. Further the chances of pest infestations are going up with increase in temperature. Now we will see about the regional distribution of tea cultivation in our country. Know that important tea growing regions in North India are Northeast Assam, the Surma Valley, the Duwars region and then Terai and Darjeeling regions. Then in the southern part of India tea is cultivated mainly in two geographical regions. They are the Nilgiris region and also Western Ghats in the Karnataka and Kerala states. So with this information let us discuss in brief about the tea board of India which is a statutory body under the ministry of commerce and industry and it was established in the year 1954 as per the provisions of tea act of 1953. Know that the vision of the board is to make India the leading producer and supplier of quality tea in the global market. Its mission is to develop effective management strategies in order to facilitate competence and innovation in tea plantations and also promotion of innovative processing technology for producing good quality tea then augmentation of high value tea exports and capacity building for human resources at all levels in the tea industry and this board that is tea board is represented from members of parliament tea producers also from tea traders and also from consumers and representatives of principal tea producing states also remember that uh, tea board of india is located at uh, kolkata similarly remember that uh, cotton board of india is located at mumbai tobacco board is at uh, guntur Coffee board at uh, Bengaluru, spices board at Cochin and rubber board is located at uh, Kotayam in the state of Kerala. So this is all about this news article. Let us move on to the next news article analysis. This news article is about the issues associated with Naga peace deal. So in this context uh, we will discuss about the Naga peace accord or Naga peace deal and also the timeline of Naga political problem. We know that uh, Nagas were the inhabitants of the Naga hills along the northeast frontier on the Assam Burma border. So in the year 1918 the Naga club was formed and it started the Naga movement which claimed a distinct uh, ethnic identity for Nagas and demanded an independent homeland for the Nagas. So in the year 1929 Naga club submitted a memorandum to the Simon Commission. They emphasized that Naga people and Indians are separate with no common history therefore Naga should be given independent status. Further in the year 1946 the Naga club was renamed as Naga National Council that is NNC. Then in the year 1947 a nine point agreement was signed between NNC and the then governor of Assam. But some Naga leaders misinterpreted some clauses of the agreement and believed that Nagas had the right to opt out of the Indian Union after 10 years. So in the month of January 1950 Nagas declared independence after conducting their own plebiscite but this plebiscite was rejected by the Indian government. So on one hand the government of India suppressed the separatist movements in the northeast and the other hand uh, the government of India negotiated with moderate Naga leaders. Therefore the state of Nagaland came into existence in the year 1963 and in the year 1964 the Nagaland peace mission appointed by the government of India signed a ceasefire agreement with the prominent Naga leader A.Z. Fiso. Further in the year 1975 the Shillong Accord was signed in which NNC agreed to give up arms and ammunition and to accept the Indian constitution. But few Naga leaders opposed this Shillong Accord and formed the National Socialist Council of Naga Land that is NSCN in the year 1980. Then in the year 1988 the NSCN further split into two groups that is NSCN IM and NSCN K. 
okay in the later days nscn im emerged as the major insurgent group and they demanded a greater nagaland or nagalim which means the integration of naga people who are inhabiting in the areas in the states of assam nagaland arunachal pradesh and then manipur so finally in the year 2015 government of india and the national socialist council of nagaland signed an agreement known as the naga peace accord or naga peace deal This accord was signed by the government's mediator for Naga peace talks Sri R N Ravi who is the present governor of Naga land but the agreement did not come into force due to unrealistic demands of NSCN IM which demands for a separate constitution separate flag then the integration of all Naga people so if these demands were agreed this would result in territorial changes in the states like Arunachal Pradesh Assam Naga land and also in the state of manipur so that is why the article says that the all arunachal pradesh students union that is aapsu rejects any territorial changes this is all about naga peace deal or naga peace accord in the similar context if you want to know about assam accord we have discussed in detail about assam accord in our tool tagus in the news analysis you can refer this video for better understanding of assam accord with this information let's move on to the next news article analysis This news article talks about a study on seed germination which was conducted by a team of researchers at the Indian Institute of Science Education and Research that is IISCR Bhopal. Here the study was to determine the optimum timing of seed germination so that the plant yields can be improved. In the context of this news article we are going to discuss the process of seed germination then about plant growth regulators that is PGOs and then important highlights of the news article now we know that uh, the first step in the process of uh, plant growth is uh, seed germination and the seed germination technically defined as the emergence and the development from the seed embryo of those essential structures which are indicative of the ability to produce a normal plant under favorable conditions so to define in the simple terms it is the growth of a seed into a young plant or a seedling if the seed germinates when favorable conditions for growth exist in the environment If the favorable conditions include substrate or soil, then nutrients, then favorable temperature, favorable moisture, and also required solar light. And in absence of such favorable conditions, the seeds do not germinate. So in such condition, it goes into a period of suspended growth or suspended rest, and we call it as a dormant period. Therefore, once favorable conditions return, the seeds resume metabolic activities and growth takes place. Now, if you look at the news article, the researchers focused on the matters which promote and inhibit the sprouting process of seeds. In this regard we should know about uh, plant growth regulators that is PGOs see they are small and uh, simple molecules of uh, diverse chemical composition and they can be divided into two groups based on their functions in a living plant body one group of uh, PGOs that is uh, plant growth regulators involved in growth promoting activities these include cell division cell enlargement plant formation etc and they also include tropic growth flowering fruiting and seed formation and the examples for seed promoting hormones include auxins zebrillins and cytokinins then the other group of plant growth regulators involve in uh, various growth inhibiting activities such as uh, dormancy and abscission and this is in order to cope with stressful conditions like unfavorable conditions unfavorable environment and the example of growth inhibiting hormone include abscisic acid that is aba I know that abscisic acid signals the seed not to germinate until there are favorable conditions for the growth of plant and if there is a stress after the germination of a seed abscisic acid suppresses further growth of the seedling in this context try to remember there is one more plant growth regulator that is ethylene and it could be fit either of the groups but it is largely an inhibitor of growth activities In this news article the researchers focused on abscisic acids mechanism for arresting the post germination growth of plants in response to environmental conditions and they proved that the inhibition of a seedling growth by abscisic acid is much stronger in darkness as compared to light conditions further the researchers said that uh, the factors that modulate abscisic acid are vital to develop economically important plant varieties it also important for developing plants 
that have better tolerance to stressful conditions. This is all about you should focus from this news article. Let us start our practice question session. Let us take up this question that is the arrange the following places from north to south. The places given are Daulat Beg Goldi, Srinagar, Jammu and then Kargil. So for this question they are asking that the places has to be arranged from north to south. If you look at this map you can clearly notice that uh, Daulat Beg Goldi is located in the Union territory of Ladakh. Then south of DBO is Kargil, then Srinagar and then Jammu. So the correct answer for this question is option D 1, 4, 2, 3. In the context of this question try to remember the location of other important places in the erstwhile state of uh, Jammu and Kashmir such as the location of uh, Saksigam Valley, then location of uh, Karakoram Pass, Depsang Pass, then also the location of Pangang So, Galvan Valley. And also try to locate the important road that is DSDBO road which connects Leh then Darbuk Shayuk with Daulat Beg Oldi. Also locate the places like Chushul, Chumar, Demchak. And we know that these places were in the news again and again and the location of these places are important for your films exam. Let us take up this question. Consider the following statements with reference to vaccines. A vaccine works by stimulating a person's immune system to produce immunity to a specific disease. Vaccines contain antibodies as an ingredient to fight a given disease. Which of the following given statements is or or correct? So in the context of this question try to remember that a vaccine in simple terms is a product that stimulates a person's immune system to produce immunity to a specific disease. And vaccine consists of four main ingredients. These are antigen, adjuvant, then preservative and then stabilizers. Know that antigen is a killed or weakened form of a viral or bacterial stain and it is used to train our bodies to recognize and fight against the given disease. Then the next ingredient is adjuvant which helps to boost our immune response. Then the third ingredient is uh, preservative which ensure a vaccine stays effective for a longer period. Then the stabilizer protect the vaccine during the storage and the transportation process. So the given first statement is correct whereas the second statement is incorrect because vaccine contains antigen but not the antibodies. So if vaccine is introduced into the human body, human body produces antibodies against the antigens. So the correct answer for this question is option A 1 only. Consider the following statements. The initial attempts to increase tea cultivation in India were made by the Governor General Warren Hastings. Tea Board India is a statutory body under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. Darjeeling tea and Kangra tea are registered geographical indications. So for this question you need to choose correct statement or statements. Here the first statement is correct because the initial attempts to increase tea cultivation in India were made by the then Governor General Warren Hastings. And we know that the Charter Act of 1833 ended the monopoly enjoyed by the British East India Company in tea trade with China and this led to the introduction of tea cultivation in India. And in the year 1823, the first Indian tea from the state of Assam was sent to England for public sale. If the second statement is incorrect because tea board is a statutory body under the Ministry of Commerce and Industry but not under the Ministry of Agriculture and Farmers Welfare. This board was established in the year 1954 as per the provisions of Tea Act of 1953. Know that the vision of the board is to make India the leading producer and uh, leading supplier of quality tea in the global market. The third statement says Darjeeling tea and Kangra tea are registered geographical indications. This statement is also correct because Darjeeling tea from the state of West Bengal was the first agriculture commodity to get a geographical indications tag in the year 2004-05. Also know that Kangra tea from the state of Himachal Pradesh got a GA tag in the year 2005-06. So out of the given statements, second statement is incorrect. So the correct answer for this question is option C 1 and 3 only. Consider the following statements regarding Nagas. Here three statements are given you need to choose correct statement or statements. Naga people belong to the Indo-Mongolite group of people. Some major Naga tribes such as Angami, Awo and Kuki are recognized as particularly vulnerable tribal groups. 
Then the third statement says Naga languages come under the Tibeto Burma family. If the first statement is correct because Naga people belong to the Indo Mongolite group of people living in the contiguous areas of northeastern hills of India and the upper portion of western Myanmar. Know that uh, the Naga languages differ from tribe to tribe and sometimes even from village to another village. However, the Naga languages come under the Tibeto Burma family. If the second statement says some major Naga tribes such as Angami, Evo and Kuki are recognized as particularly vulnerable tribal groups. This statement is incorrect because from northeast only two tribes such as Maram Nagas of Manipur and Riangs of Tripura recognized as particularly vulnerable tribal groups. So the correct answer for this question is option D 1 and 3 only. Consider the following statements with reference to factors responsible for plant growth and development. Here three statements are given you need to choose correct statement or statements. Important factors affecting plant growth include substrate, temperature, moisture and light. Auxins, cytokinins or growth inhibiting hormones in plants. Abscisic acid that is ABA is a growth promoting hormone which promotes shoot growth in the plants. If the first statement is correct whereas second and third statements are incorrect because the favorable conditions for plant growth and development include favorable or suitable soil or substrate then required nutrients then favorable temperature suitable moisture and also adequate solar light so in the absence of uh, such favorable conditions the seeds do not germinate in the context of this question, try to remember about uh, plant growth regulators that is PCRs. They are uh, simple small molecules of uh, diverse chemical composition and they can be divided into two groups based on their functions in a living plant body. One group of PCRs involved in growth promoting activities. These include uh, cell division, cell enlargement, pattern formation. They also include uh, tropic growth, flowering, fruiting and also seed formation. The examples for growth promoting hormones include auxins, zebrillins and cytokinins. Then the next group of plant growth regulators is involved in various growth inhibiting activities such as dormancy and abscission. And the example for growth inhibiting hormone is abscisic acid that is ABA. Try to remember that there is one more important piece here that is ethylene and it could be fit either of the groups but it is largely an inhibitor of growth activities. So the correct answer for this question is option A 1 only. With this we have come to the end of analysis of today's Hindu newspaper. If you like the video please do like, share, comment and subscribe Shankar IS Academy YouTube channel for more updates. Thank you.